Hi guys, I'm here today to talk about my favourite reads of 2017. So I've got seven books to talk about and I reviewed six of these previously so I'll link all those videos down below so you can hear about them in more detail and then I'll talk a little bit more about the one book that I haven't already reviewed. So three of these are non-fiction and four are fiction and I'm going to talk about the three non-fiction books first and they all happen to be memoirs which I only just realised so it turns out I really enjoy memoirs. So firstly we have The Hate Race by Maxine Benneba clark This is actually, which I found out after reading it, the first in a series of three memoirs so I can't wait for the other two to be released. So this is about Maxine Benneba clark growing up in Australia. Now Maxine Benneba clark grew up in the 80s in Australia and she's black which was incredibly rare at the time so she grew up in a, an all white community and it's about what that was like. So this starts at the moment of her parents meeting and you follow them moving to Australia and then having children and you get to around the point of Maxine being at 13 or 14 years of age. This is beautifully written, it's incredibly easy to read and even though it's nothing like my own life and the moments of home and school life filled me with nostalgia, yet this book also made me incredibly angry and sad that such ignorant people could possibly exist and that not only could they direct hatred at adults but also at children um, and this really gives you an insight into what that hatred is like to um, live with and have directed at you and how so it's so difficult to understand that hatred when you're so young yourself so I highly recommend this she writes beautifully and her short story collection Foreign Soil is also excellent so um, she's definitely a writer to watch so there's The Hate Race and then secondly we have Men We Reap by Jasmine Ward I'm sure most of you have heard of this. This is such a celebrated memoir and it's the first of Jessamyn Ward's books I've read but I plan to try and read all of her novels this year because I have a feeling she's going to be a favourite author of mine. This is so sad but yet so perfectly written. This is about the fact that Jessamyn Ward lost five men that were very close to her within the space of four years. So it's just devastating. Um, all these men died in different ways, but they all live um, in the place where Jasmine grew up, which is Mississippi. And she relates all of their deaths to um, their race. All of these men are African-American. Um, and I don't want to sort of explain how she does that because a part of the joy of the book, joy is an odd word, um, is in the perfect way she explains that. And interspersed with chapters that focus on their deaths and what these men meant to her and how she coped with their deaths you also learn about her childhood um, from the point of her birth to the woman she is today um, and how that's so um such a big part of that is the place she grew up in and the people she was surrounded by um, and how that community is really being um wrecked by um by their race and the way the wider american community um perceive them and, and treat them because of that so this is phenomenal and um, she writes perfectly so i would 100 percent um, encourage everybody to read this book now the third one is the book that i haven't previously reviewed so i don't think i'm going to talk about it in loads of detail here because i think i'm still going to try and review this one because i just loved it too much to talk about for just a little bit so in brief, um, this is Riverine, a memoir from Anywhere About Here by Angela Palm. And this is a memoir that is mainly focused on two big things. One of those is a, a place and what a place does to you, in particular the place you grew up. Um, in this author's case, that is um, rural Indiana. And then um, the other big focus of this novel is a boy that Angela fell in love with when she was very, very young. Um, and he later was sent to prison for the murder of two people, which he admits that he committed. So those two things are intertwined because Angela examines how both of them could grow up as neighbours in the same village but grow to be such different people. Um, so with the same opportunities given to them, how they can make such different choices which would entirely dictate the rest of their lives. So that's really simply put, but this is perfection. And I know that loads of people wouldn't like this. Um, on Goodreads I saw loads of people said this was really pretentious, a real difficult read. I couldn't disagree more. This is the sort of writing that if I could write, I'd want to write like. And there's a few authors I say that about. And I don't even say it about some of my favourite authors, like Sarah Waters. I wouldn't want to be able to write like Sarah Waters. Now, I love it, but that's not the style that... that puts all the thoughts into my head into perfection. This is the sort of voice. And um, she talks about loads of things that are so um, near and dear to my heart. She lives very unconventionally. And she, the, the way she voices those thoughts are exactly how I think about my views on life, but can't put them so beautifully. 
this is this is wonderful you know i really have a, a fascination with um, nostalgia and with girlhood but also i have a deep interest on um, on criminality and the way we perceive criminals and how they're treated in different parts of the world and how in a lot of people's mind we let one moment dictate who a person is in totality and this is a really good commentary on that so I adored this book and I'd, I really would love for more people to read it so that is Riverine. And then the other four are the novels and as I said I've already reviewed these four. So we have The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker. I had to put this here. I have some reservations about this novel but I loved reading it. I couldn't stop thinking about the characters when I was reading it. I wanted to speed through it to find out what would happen to them but I wanted to slow down so I could spend more time with them. Beautifully written and just a gorgeous book. I had a couple of reservations. I think that um, the main character is perhaps too adored by everybody. I think that perhaps some of the things that happen aren't completely believable to me but yet I loved it so so much and had um, such joy reading it that I couldn't not put it here. And this is also I believe going to be a trilogy and um, so I'm looking forward to seeing um, where the author goes next with Ari's story. So that is The Clay Girl. Then we have the Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. Again, this was such a joy to read, completely different. This is a really cosy book, a book I could relate to much more because it's set in England. Um, this is set in the 1970s and again it's about two young girls um, growing up um, and they live on a very small road called The Avenue and one of their neighbours goes missing and they're sort of going round the neighbouring houses and trying to investigate this. And they find out a lot of things that they shouldn't and you understand them a lot more than they do. So you start to piece together the secrets of this avenue have kept for many, many years. And I love this and I cannot wait to read her new book. So yeah, that's The Trouble of Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. And then these two were the best novels I read in 2017. With the previous two, as I said, I had reservations about The Clay Girl and I felt that with The Trouble of Goats and Sheep, the ending was a bit too speedy, um, but these two books for me, perfect, and there's nothing I could knock about them. So the first one is English Animals by Laura Kay, and this came completely by surprise. Um, I'd read the blurb, hadn't heard any reviews, hadn't looked at the writing style, but just liked the sound of it and thought, you know, I found it in a charity shop, I'll risk it and I'll give it a go. And I loved this. Um, I read this in like one or two sittings, it's so easy to turn the page, and I just adored the characters, and there's so many themes in this book which I just loved and found so interesting and yeah even now I can picture all the characters and all the all the rooms um, scenes I can picture um, exactly how they happen so this is about a young girl called Mirka who moves over from I think let me just check so I get this right she comes over from Slovakia and she intends to get a job as a nanny and instead is hired by these two um, this married couple who live in the countryside and own a, a estate that they can't afford basically and they're trying all these small businesses that they want Mika to help them with and one of them being a taxidermy and she gets incredibly involved with these small businesses but also with their relationship. I don't really want to say much more than that because I knew so little going in and I loved seeing it unfold. I just loved this and I don't think it's for everyone but for whatever reason I adored it and I am a firm follower now of Laura Kay and her work and can't wait to see what she does next. And then I think my favourite novel of the year and I need to get um, a finished copy of it. I think I'm going to get the US edition because it just came out and it is perfection. Um, so this is my advanced readers copy and this is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. So I'm going to put a picture of the beautiful US edition here. So loads of people wrote about this last year so I probably don't need to talk about it at any great length but this is the sort of thing that I really really love. You know I think if you like Joanna Cannon, Clarice Bray, Kit Dewall, you're probably going to like Sarah Winman as well and Lots of people told me that and they were right. The same sort of cosy um, family British drama that focuses on working class people um, but yet has really deep emotions and really devastating things happen but yet all of it still feels so perfect um, and leaves you with this glow but also this 
great sadness and that's exactly what Tin Man did for me. It's such a short book and um, but it really packs a punch and it's one of those books that I'm always scared to reread because um, I read it so quickly but loved it so much so I don't really want to say what it's about because I think lots of people have, have talked about it and it's a book again that I think it's best to go into not knowing a lot um, but I, I love this book and it was one of those books when I read the first paragraph I had this biggest grin on my face because I just knew that I was going to um, really love her as a writer so I'd highly recommend it. So those are my favourite seven books of 2017. Do let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought of them, if you're planning to read them or if you have any other recommendations for me and um, that you think I'd like based on, on these books. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.